Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got some requests recently to do a video about work van shelving. So here I'm in my Transit 350 extended high roof and give you some tips and show you what I did with my work van. Hopefully it'll help you out on organizing yours and designing your shelving. So first to start off, one tip that I did whenever I bought my van, I got the interior upgrade kit, which essentially gave me a rubber mat on the floor that's got like a carpet pad underneath of it, which I really like. And then it also came with a thin plastic material on the inside. You can see this black material back here. That helps protect the sides of the van where the wall is really thin. If a tool were to bang up against that sheet metal, it would make dents and stuff like that. So by going with that upgrade, it prevented me from having to line the inside with Luon or something like that. Now, as far as materials go, I went with three quarter inch pre-finished plywood. I bought this from Menards. Um, you could probably use AC plywood. Um, some might be tempted to use half inch plywood. I went with three quarter because of the way uh, I wanted to build things out. I felt like I needed the three quarter inch thickness on the plywood. But the pre-finished is nice. It's uh, kind of repels dust a little bit better and doesn't get quite as grimy and greasy as a plywood without any finish on it. As far as the construction method, you can see I've got verticals and horizontals. The way I designed mine, uh, I laid out all of my tools and I started with verticals and then I, I drilled um, shelf peg holes in all of them so that the shelf peg holes are at the same height and that helps me kind of keep my shelves uh, all nice and level because I can just use pins to put the shelves on and I know I'm right where I need to be. And then if I want to incline a shelf like I have with these here so that my boxes don't come flying off, I can just put uh, drop the pins on the back side of the shelf and uh, then that puts some incline on the shelves. Now these aren't just, these horizontal uh, members aren't just all sitting on shelf peg holes. On the underside of all of these shelves, I use pocket hole screw joinery and I've done that on a number of uh, a tool trailer, another work van, and the pocket hole joinery has worked great for me. So if you've got a Craig Foreman, uh, that will like pay for itself on your first vehicle outfit um, because you're gonna drill a lot of pocket holes for your shelves. So I'll turn you around here and you can see underneath here, you can see a peg and then you can see the pocket holes so I'll set the shelf on the peg and that's really just to get it in position. And then I'll screw everything together with those pocket hole screws. And the nice thing about this system is then as your tools adapt and things change, it's really easy to move these shelves around if you need to. If we turn over to this side, you'll see I use some uh, Festool sustainers, very overpriced plastic, but um, Sustainers were the thing before a lot of the other tool manufacturers started making uh, good storage systems. So this is how I've got my sustainer storage set up. You can see on, on my shelves, I uh, mortised in a nice little square here for the feet. And the sustainer sits on that. It's got a little bit of movement, but I've never had any problem with these coming off. And to get them out, all I have to do is lift it a little bit and it pulls right out, but in transit it holds in there just fine. One other note, whenever you're designing your layout for your different tools, one of the reasons I like the Festool sustainers is that they are um, less in depth than some of the other toolboxes out there. So my shelving is actually not as deep on this side of my van as it is on this side. So on this side of the van, I keep my larger tools like my miter saw, uh, air compressor. I keep my Milwaukee pack out on this side, which has a lot more depth along with my table saw and vacuums. So I kind of kept that in mind as I designed this. I wanted one side to have deeper shelving and then the other side to be narrower because I wanted to keep as much of this space in the center open as possible 
because I transport a lot of cabinets and stuff in this van. So keeping um, a wide space really helps me out a lot. So you'll notice as we kind of pan around, there's a variety of different kind of techniques that I'm using on these different shelves. One of them obviously that we already kind of touched on a little bit is using an incline on your shelf to keep tools from flying out. So that's all I use um, for a lot of stuff like this. Uh, keeps everything pretty snug. Be advised you do need a decent incline or else stuff will fly out if you hit a corner too hard. Uh, found that out many times, but that, that's a pretty good system, works pretty well. The other thing you can implement is putting a nosing on your shelf on the front edge, and that's just gonna kinda give you a safeguard for stuff to bump up against where it's, it's not gonna come flying out as easy. You can see here I've got a nosing uh, back here. This is a nosing on this shelf also. Um, so that's a good technique also. Then of course, as I already mentioned, uh, mortising a shelf like this, and it's just flat, but it still works just fine. Now one piece of advice I would give, and this is a, <clears throat> a personal preference thing for me, I like to have everything on wheels as much as possible. If um, So I, I like to use all the space that I can for carts. You can see here I've got a Festool cart that will transport sustainers. Down here is another cart. Here I have my Milwaukee Packouts on a cart. Uh, table saw is on wheels, which pretty much only leaves me for this space over here for additional carts. And just the way things worked out, I use I put my miter saw down there. Um, but anyways, utilize carts as much as possible. And keep in mind whenever you're laying out your spaces, build your shelves around those bigger ticket items like your, your table saw, your mil, your pack out cart, things like that. Whenever you've got an empty van, just set your big stuff in the van and then start to base your layout for your tools off of your bigger stuff first. And then you can kind of fill in with, uh, you know, your smaller hand tools after that. When it comes to selecting your tool storage box of choice, I kind of recommend going with two different styles of toolboxes. You know, there's so many options. You've got Festool Sustainers, you've got the Milwaukee Packout, DeWalt T-Stack, DeWalt Tough Boxes, lots of options nowadays and they keep getting better and better. But the width and depth of those boxes is different, you know, for all those different manufacturers. And you need to know that in advance whenever you're building out your shelves so you can accommodate those those widths. So like for example, I'm pretty well stuck on this side of the van because this whole side of the van was built around the Festool carts. I have enough width here and down here for the Festool carts. And then on the inside, I've got three columns that just fit the width of the Festool sustainers. Now unfortunately, for some of these other boxes like the Packouts, or this is like a Versa stack, which is like a T stack from Craftsman, which is great too. But anyways, they won't fit in those columns. So I'm kind of, uh, you, you can back yourself into a corner if you're not careful by making things too small. So try and make things um, as future proof as possible in case you wanna add a box that's maybe a little bit wider maybe you make your columns a little bit wider to fit those wider tool toolboxes in. So we talked about uh, the construction aspects of the shelving. One question I get fairly often is then how do you attach the shelving to your van? And in my case with these uh, Ford Transits, they have what they call upfitter points, which is a, um, uh, what do they call it? It's a nut essentially that's welded into the frame and then you use an M8 bolt to attach, uh, it could be metal shelving or in my case wood shelving. But you see here, that is an upfitter point. So I just put a backer on this that's obviously attached to my shelving all around with pocket hole screws. And then with an M8 bolt, I can bolt the shelves to the frame of the van. So like there's a bolt, there's a bolt, 
there's a bolt. So as we, as we go down the line, you can get really solid connections. There's usually a row up top and then a row on the bottom with about eight to 10 upfitter points per side on the van. And that makes really rock solid shelving. That's all I've found that I need. Now let's talk about drawers a little bit. I'm mighty proud of the drawers that I have in this van. Um, there's some just random stuff you need on your work van that you're not gonna be using all the time and you don't wanna be dragging into houses, but you need storage for it. And having a few drawers works great. Uh, as you can see here, you do have to work around the wheel wells on your van and that's gonna make it so you can't use carts in, in this area or on this side. So putting some drawers above that area worked really well for me. Now, if you use drawers, how are you gonna lock them? Um, you can see here, these are not coming open, but it's super annoying if you use like a block of wood and rotate it to uh, make kind of a latch because what will inevitably happen is you'll go tearing off down the road, make a corner, and all of a sudden you'll hear, hear your drawer come flying open. And I had a, a van in the past where I did that, and I can't tell you how many drawer slides I broke with that system. So I came up with something different, and I'll show you what I got going on here. So I had this opening, and I wanted to make the drawers, so I use standard uh, heavy-duty drawer glides which is really easy. Uh, if you're not familiar with drawer glide, you just figure a half inch of space on both sides and you make your drawer, you know, an inch less wide than the opening, pretty simple. So then the latch mechanism I came up with is uh, pretty slick and it automatically closes itself up again every time you close the door. So you just pop this up trying to do this one handed and it's not working real well. So it just pops up, drawer opens, latches itself, won't come open. So I'll pop this drawer off and show you what's behind everything. So again, tons of storage in these drawers. I'll take this top one off and show you what's going on. You just find these levers on the inside, push them down and your drawer will come right off. Lighting is a little less than ideal on this, but hopefully you can see it. This is just a piece of strapping that I got from Lowe's from their hardware aisle. It'd be like where all the hinges and stuff like that are, I found it. But normally this is a rectangle, uh, and then it's got a couple holes drilled in it. So I cut this section off, which then opened up this hole here, and then this hole back here, I just put a screw in, and that's the pivot point. So you can see how this raises up and then it just rests on this other screw right here in the, in the closed position. So all you need to do is add a screw on the side of your drawer then, and that screw is gonna catch in that hole uh, whenever it's closed. And so whenever you close it, that screw is gonna slide right on down this thing until it gets, uh, till it catches up here on this hole, then the lever's gonna fall down and your drawer's gonna be locked. So that works really great for me. Again here, pop this up. This is the screw that's gonna catch on the lever. You can watch this lever rise as I push it back and then it falls right into place. That's not going anywhere. So same system on all of these drawers, works really good. Next piece of advice that I'll give you, um, I have zero regrets about getting the high roof transit. It has been absolutely awesome. I transport tall cabinets and stuff in this, and I'm uh, 5'10", and I can walk around underneath my ladders on the ceiling comfortably. It's super nice. So if you can implement the ceiling into your storage area, that saves a lot of space too and gives you a lot of flexibility. So what I have on my ceiling, over here, I have a four foot ladder. This is a six foot ladder. Those are just strapped on with bungee cords, nothing fancy. Uh, I keep my miter saw wings up on the top shelf here, but then uh, brooms I also keep on the ceiling. So these will just pop 
right off of the ceiling. They don't fall down. These are just the, uh, these are just clips that you can get from the hardware store or off Amazon. I'll try and link them in the video if I can find some, but uh, those work really great for your broom storage gets the brooms out of the way. Over here on the ceiling, I utilize this space for my tracks, for my track saws. These are toggle clamps that are bolted to the ceiling with tech screws. Works fantastic to get your tracks out of the way. Just pop those, uh, pop those down and your tracks will come right off. I can do this all one-handed. You can see that? Um, so that works really great also. Got my long track, short track, and then medium track here. Down here on the floor <clears throat> where the wheel wells are, you're not gonna be able to get full depth. It doesn't go all the way back because of the wheel well, so I made an, a nice little area right there for clamps on both sides so that's a way that you can utilize that storage over the over the top of the wheel well and then in front of the wheel well if you're still trying to decide what length of van you want to get uh, i went with the extended transit version um, for a couple reasons i need maximum storage space because again i haul a lot of cabinets and stuff like that with this Sortimo bulkhead up here, I can get about 12 and a half foot of material uh, in the back of my van, bumping up to this and then bumping up to the doors so I can haul 12 foot uh, lumber around just fine. And then if I need to haul 16 foot sticks of material, I can pop this door open and you can haul 16 foot material with the doors closed if you slide it through this sort of mode door. So I got this sliding door and it's worked great for me. Hopefully this video helps out some of you guys who are trying to des design your own van shelving. I'll give you a walk around real quick. Um, I think that's all I've got for this video. Uh, I keep my miter saw down on the bottom typically. This is my microwave and battery cart. I keep all my batteries and stuff in there. This is my uh, tool specifically for a jam master. A lot of you guys probably won't know what that is, but it's just a dedicated tool set up for, for something specific. Random hand tools and stuff up here, air compressor, tool tote, and a couple boxes of hole saw and Forstner drill bits, clamps on the bottom, uh, again, drawers, random stuff, saw blades, bandsaw blades, pocket door hardware, splinter guards, batteries, tape, masks, all kind of random stuff. This one, if I can get it open. This one is just random hand tools, uh, extra stud finder because they tend to break, you know, just extra hyper gun, stuff like that. Same thing, hand tools in this bottom one also. Surge tank for my air compressor, more hand tools. Uh, screws right here, uh, drywall anchors and uh, punch out type stuff here. Nails on this shelf, two and a half, two inch and a half, uh, glue, paper towels, just random stuff. Two vacs, table saw. This is the out feed for my table saw, uh, ladder, saw horses. On this side, I keep my levels. Those just pop right onto some wood blocks. Caulking guns can go here. Hang my tool belt on that. Parts for sustainers, trash bags, random stuff. Light up here. Sustainers. Um, keep some caulking and paint and stuff up here. Come winter time, I'll have to take all this out and put it into a tote so it doesn't freeze. Uh, knee pads, more knee pads, random stuff, you know, so works pretty good. Over here is where I keep my extension cords and air hoses, and typically I got another set of miter saw wings and my miter saw stand, uh, the DeWalt stand hangs right here. So that's my van. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know uh, your thoughts in the comments. 
and uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. I'm always trying to bring valuable stuff to you, so hit that subscribe button, and hopefully we'll see you again next time.